This product was sent for review, all opinions are my own, and weren't shared with Turtle Beach prior to this video being released. This is the first Xbox controller reviewed on the channel, and what a slap it's been in all the right ways. But let me preface it with the fact that this controller is extra, and I love it. Turtle Beach does many things not seen prior in a gamepad and will address it all, but it's also important to come from the perspective that it is an elite controller, and as such, it sits in that higher end game controller market. In the box is the carry case, very nice, very premium. It has a hole to charge while in the case. The top layer has a zipper pouch to store the dongle and cap sleeves. Then attached to the controller with magnets is its charging dock. Let's quickly go over accessories. You have two pairs of cap sleeves, one concave with four dots, the other slightly convex, almost flat actually, with uh, textured dots all over. I'm not a fan of the first one. The rubber is very soft, very slippery. The other is as well, but the texture dot gives it more grip. With that said, the original sticks are great, so personally I don't use those caps, but maybe you will. They're standard as well, so they fit on a series controller or just any other sticks that are standard to mid-sized. The dongle, it allows you to connect to the Xbox and PC, so why would you use the dongle rather than connecting on Bluetooth? the pulling rate. As it stands, this controller has double the pulling rate that you find on the standard Xbox controller market, which is 125 hertz rather than the Elite 250 hertz. This controller has the latter, but only if wired or using the dongle. If you play using Bluetooth, you are capped at 125 hertz, and for the record, that is not on Turtle Beach. This currently is a technology limitation of Bluetooth. Most people wouldn't feel a difference, but so you know you'll get the most using it out of the dongle and wired. And last is the dock and what a fantastic one it is. As we mentioned, it uses magnets to make sure your connection is sound, but it also has a space dedicated to the dongle itself. In short, plug the dock to your PC, enter the dongle into your dock, and so the dock will act as your 2.4 gigahertz antenna. Overall, the accessories provided with this product are top tier and great additions to what an elite experience should feel like. All right, let's move to the star of the show, the Stealth Ultra. I gotta say guys, this controller is, is not photogenic. When I originally saw it, I thought the design made it look cheap. I couldn't have been more wrong. It's one of those things where you need to see it with your own eyes for the aesthetics to really come through. You know what else really comes through? the love I've been getting from you all. I realize being a tech YouTuber comes with odds of you seeing this video only to potentially not run into my reviews again. But if you do hit the subscribe button, rest assured I'll bring you quality videos that focuses on the user experience, the user being you, and please consider leaving a like so that more can do as well. It is gorgeous. I actually spent my entire April Fool's video showcasing it for three minutes that and trying to make you laugh of course <laughs> the middle bottom section looks metallic very gunmetal like and the little triangle on the grip are actually textured not a lot but enough that you feel a sensory difference they're also contoured by nice rgb whereas the rest is a matte rigid plastic the d-pad shoulders and triggers and the four programmable paddles in the back are plastic they do a fine job at mimicking brushed metal you have a 3.5 millimeter jack at the bottom, a USB-C up top, and hair trigger switches for both LT and RT. In case you're not familiar, what this does is remove the travel distance of your triggers and have them go from zero to 100% on actuation, eliminating the gradation that analog triggers usually have. This is popularized mainly for shooters such as COD, Fortnite, Apex, and the likes. This way you can have your analog for racing games and hair triggers when you prefer quick action solutions. So. Let's talk about the buttons and first is the D-pad. This is the best D-pad I've ever experienced on a controller. If it is important for you, I don't know that it justifies the asking price alone, but I'd be hard pressed to find something as smooth, responsive, and easy to glide on. It's phenomenal and yes, Microsoft does a great one for sure, but this is beyond. The six are hall sensor, so extremely low risks of drift, magnet based rather than potentiometer, so it also means lower dead zone if you prefer, and you can, which we'll address during the software portion. Every other input buttons are on micro switches, so that's the ABXY, the paddles, and the shoulders. They do feel great and offer responsive and quick to actuate solutions overall, so competitive gamers often prefer them. 
Having reviewed more and more controllers with them lately, I'm starting to really appreciate micro switches. I'd still favor membrane, but I'm, I'm slowly starting to feel like I'm equally okay with both. S starting, I said, just... And the rest, which are function buttons such as select, start, capture, home, are tactile switches. Talking about function buttons, you may have seen one you do not recognize, that little plus sign at the bottom. This button unleashes the operating system, you heard me right, of the controller. Now, everything you can do on the PC software solution, you can do here. Effectively, if you are solely an Xbox player, that same app is available as well. There is also an iOS and Android companion app, but it's mostly good for profile switching. Back to the plus, as you hit it, the little screen sitting over the home button shows you a UI that you can navigate using the controller. As to not dedicate the entire video showing you what is a rather extremely intuitive and highly reliable software solution, I'll tell you all the things that it can do in the GamePad OS. If you are using the controller's act, which blows anything else I've ever seen on a controller, by the way, you can do the following. Adjust in-game mic audio mixer, mute mic input, change equalizer values, equalizer, yes. As well, you can map your paddles, address the vibration, address the RGB's brightness, effects and colors, change the anti-drift stick's curvature, put yourself in pairing mode, read your Xbox messages through their proprietary social app, save and quickly change from 10 profiles, address the gamepad screen like timeout, brightness, etc. Change the power mode such as echo, full balance for better battery management. And even after this extensive list, I still skipped a few. It is impressive because not only do you have a lot of feature, it's all laid out in a way that it is so simple to operate. It would almost be an insult to call this thing feature rich. It is beyond. It redefines just how much a controller can do. Actually, I want to challenge you. Let me know in the comment box of one feature I have not listed that you wish was part of this onboard OS they got going. The last for us to talk about is the battery. Turtle Beach claims up to 30 hours on a full charge, but that'll depend on the settings and the modes. I wasn't able to kill it in a five hour session that I had with all the bells and whistles fully utilized, but either way, as long as you keep this thing docked, I don't think you'll ever kill it in a one seating. The other aspect and one that I wouldn't say I'm disappointed I'm not, but if there is one feature that feels a little less premium, it is the rumble. Much like a series controller, both the grips and the triggers do have motors, which you can all independently adjust in the settings. The vibrations are for the most part good. Better than most, but you have a few third-party solutions I'd rank higher. The unfortunate part is that while the rumble itself is shaky enough and pretty on par with the series controller, it is also noisier. Now, of course, you can tweak it like no other, so in that sense, you can lower the noise in exchange of less rumble if you prefer. It's not exaggerated or anything, but it's not as silent as Microsoft's controller for sure. As we move towards the end of this review, let's address the PC software. It is for the most part, just like the one embedded in the gamepad, extremely easy to use and navigate. The one issue I have is one that very few will encounter, the software's window for some really weird reason cannot be resized. It cannot be minimized. You can't even use win key plus arrow to move it like different monitors or the all plus enter shortcut. Why is that a problem? Well, for most it isn't. But for me, as it boots in full screen, it defaults to 32 by nine and I can't even resize it as a window. Because it reads horizontal resolutions primarily, it zooms in to a point that I can't actually use it. What I have to do instead is to resize my panel temporarily, open the software, make the adjustments, and then revert my panel's resolution. Of course, I don't do that. <laughs> I just use the onboard solution or the app on my Xbox, but as mentioned, for probably 99% of people, it won't be an issue. And for the small percentage for who it might, you can do just fine without the software. The good news is, everything you do on the app, you can do on the controller. That leaves but one thing to discuss before we move to closing opinions, the price. That controller is not cheap. It goes for 200 US dollars, so in that sense, it is absolutely in the same vein as the Series Elite controller, 
but it also offers more as well. Think of it this way. The Series Elite 2 gives you more customization when it comes to the hardware, you know, by slapping the D-pad, changing the sticks, changing the paddles. But when it comes to features, nothing comes close to the Stealth Ultra. To give you an idea, the 3.5 millimeter jack even has a super human hearing mode, which will amplify footsteps in games to give you that competitive edge. I tried and it works. Like that equalizer is not there for show. It's there to get business done. And with that reviewing, this controller was a shock because there are without a doubt things I've seen that I will either never see again, or I will hope that I do because it's amazing. That's not to say that this is the controller I'd recommend to everybody. I wouldn't. It's quite expensive. And don't get me wrong, it's amazing, but there are products that achieve 80% of what this does for 50% of the price. Although, none of these controllers will work on your Series S or Series X, which brings me to this reflection. If you are looking for the best controller for your Xbox console, don't look any further, this is it. The Hall sensor sticks alone are such a game changer in everyone's hands, but in capable ones, it's also a competitive edge. That's how good Hall Sensor Sticks can be when they are calibrated, and guess what? You can calibrate them using the tools Turtle Beach provides with it. With that in mind, that is the type of controller that you literally will not want to go back from, as for PC players, it's not that this controller is not good enough. It more than is. It's just that you have to ask yourself if that price leap can be justified. So. Think of it this way, if you very much like to play your PC like you would a console, again, don't think twice. The DAC alone in the 3.5 millimeter jack is basically the equivalent of transforming your super high-end headset into a wireless one. This DAC sounds better than any Pulse headset I've used, any Bluetooth headset I've used, because it is so perfectly tweaked that the sound reproduction is as good as plugging my headset directly to my PC. And because you can adjust the sound profile by a few clicks, I'd argue it's better due to convenience. If you use such a feature, you know that this is not the experience we get on a series controller or on a DualSense Edge included. Those 3.5 millimeter jack do the job, sure, but they don't give you as rich an experience this does. And it throws an EQ on top of that. Let's not forget, you have increased pulling rate now that part you already have superior on PC to be perfectly honest, but you're still seeing a benefit versus most non-elite controllers. Actually, I'm working on a video that will pit 20 controllers and their pulling rates, and believe me, you could never have expected the results you'll see in that video. And so, this is it guys. There's one last thing, we talk about controllers from all corner of the world, but there is one thing too easy to forget. And it is that I read countless of you guys in the comments letting me know you had issues getting customer service from XYZ company that you reached out and they never reached back. Turtle Beach is a reputable and recognizable brand and one that if your controller acts up for any reason, you know it's going to be a much smoother experience. I'm not saying it doesn't suck if it happens, but you can bet that if it does, it'll be much easier to navigate. And that sums it all. The Turtle Beach Stealth Ultra, one bad mama jama of a controller, and one that, while I do have some things I prefer here and there, I am still convinced it will remain one of the most positively eccentric controllers that I'll review in 2024. For the features it offers, for the convenience it provides, the quality that is undeniable, and the overall little to no compromise approach that they adopted with it. I game on my PC, but sometimes, I game on my TV using moonlight and sit on my couch. And when I do, the best sound reproduction I ever got is using this gamepad. So until my upcoming matchup, which I'll put up there when it's available, it would be more fair to compare this review to an older one I made of the DualSense Edge, which you can watch right here.